Dr. Sage here, back to continue to talk about the main themes of microbiology. In this video, we're going to specifically discuss the scientific method. Now before we go into the details of this video, please note this is a companion to another video called Dr. Sage's Introduction to Science, where I teach you like terminology such as what is a hypothesis versus theory versus law. Okay, what is a controlled experiment? What's a negative control? What's a positive control? That's an important companion to this video. You need to watch both videos to understand these concepts. But through watching today's video, what you should gain from it is be able to distinguish between deductive and inductive reasoning, explain what a scientific hypothesis is, and explain the general process of the scientific method. So let's begin with describing deductive versus inductive reasoning. So deductive reasoning uses general principles to explain specific observations. Whereas inductive reasoning is a process of discovering general principles by careful examination of specific cases. It's making observations through experimentation, and this is a discovery process that leads to the creation of a general principle. Now, if those definitions sound a little bit confusing, let me give you some analogies or examples. Okay, so deductive reasoning. So, I have a general principle, my idea, all humans are mortal. From that, I make an observation, I am a human. Then from there, I make a conclusion, since I'm a human and all humans are mortal, I am mortal. Okay, that's deductive reasoning. In contrast, you can have inductive reasoning. This is a process of discovering general principles by careful examination of specific cases. For example, I make an observation. I have an elevated heart rate when I'm inside a haunted house. That leads to analysis. An elevated heart rate is a symptom of being scared. From that, I come up with a hypothesis. I am scared of haunted houses. That'd be inductive reasoning. Now let's delve into a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a tentative answer to a well-framed question. Okay. Another way of saying that, a hypothesis is your best guess. A hypothesis is what you think is happening. Okay? A scientific hypothesis leads to predictions that can be tested by observation or experimentation, which that's part of the scientific method. So let me explain an example for the scientific method. Now note, there's many different ways of describing the scientific method. There's different ways of presenting it. I'm gonna give you one example presentation of how you would go through the process of the scientific method. So the scientific method starts with an observation. Now to help me describe the scientific method for you, we have our friend here, Sticky. Hi Sticky, you don't look too happy, is something wrong? Oh, you've made an observation. You've observed that your flashlight is not working. Okay, well, from that observation, you'll, it will generally cause you to ask a question. For example, why is my flashlight not working? From that question, you'll form a hypothesis to answer that question. Oh, so Sticky, you think your flashlight is not working because the batteries are dead, okay? Well, that's a valid scientific hypothesis. It's what you, it's your best guess, is what you think is happening, and that's a testable hypothesis. So from this hypothesis, you then develop a prediction. So if your hypothesis is true, then what else would be true? If it's true that your flashlight is not working because the batteries are dead, then replacing the batteries with brand new batteries should fix the problem. So after you make that prediction, what do you do? You design and conduct an experiment to test your prediction. Okay. In this case, it's a very simplistic experiment. You take out the old batteries and put in brand new batteries and see what happens. Oh no, your flashlight still isn't working. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that there was something wrong with your hypothesis. So what do you do? You start over. Okay, well, Sticky, what do you think is happening? Okay, so you think, well, maybe the flashlight isn't working because a bulb is burnt out. Okay, so if that's true, what else would be true? If it's true that it's not working because the bulb is burnt out, then taking out the old bulb and replacing it with a new bulb should fix the problem. Design and conduct an experiment, take out the old bulb, put in a brand new bulb. Yay, your flashlight is not working, okay? But you did not actually prove your hypothesis. 
you simply fail to falsify your hypothesis. Which sounds very weird. Sounds like scientists don't know how to speak. It's, you know, it'd be much simpler to say you proved your hypothesis. But instead of saying you failed to falsify, which sounds like scientists don't know how to speak. It sounds like very double negative E, which I don't think is a word. So maybe we don't know how to speak. But um, you didn't actually prove it. Okay, you simply failed to falsify it. Your hypothesis could actually still be wrong. What if the original light bulb was not burnt out, which was your hypothesis? What if the original light bulb was inserted incorrectly? And when you took it out and put in a brand new one, you inserted the new light bulb correctly. So what you had to do is you had to do more experimentation. You'd have to, for example, take that old light bulb, test it and make sure it's actually burnt out. Now, in real science, the scientific method obviously involves typically more complicated experiments than this. Also, it typically involves numbers, data you're collecting. And at the end, after you collect that data, you do statistics on it to see if it's statistically significant. And you can never do an experiment just once. You have to replicate the experiment, show that you get the same results every time. So in reality, a scientific method is a little more complicated than this, but that's a basic process of the scientific method. Now, something to note about the scientific method is that the hypothesis that's used during the scientific method, it must be both testable and falsifiable. If you come up with a hypothesis that's impossible to test or impossible to disprove, that's not a valid scientific hypothesis. For example, let's say the sticky, you say that you think your flashlight is not working because a ghost is messing with it. Okay. Now that's not a valid scientific hypothesis because it must be testable and falsifiable. No matter what those TV shows or movies are telling you, it is impossible to test for a ghost. So maybe sticky, a ghost actually is messing with your flashlight. Okay. I very seriously doubt it, but since I can't test it and I can't disprove it, that's not a valid scientific hypothesis. So in summary, supernatural or religious explanations are outside the bounds of science. This was a very brief overview of what a scientific hypothesis is and what is the process of the scientific method. Remember, there's a companion video to this one, Dr. Sage's Introduction to Science, which you need to watch to learn more details about a lot of the terms and things I didn't discuss in this video, like a controlled experiment, negative control, positive control, etc. Please go watch that video if you haven't already. And until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.